Hey guys, I'm Michelle Palmer and I'm an ag teacher at Bartow Middle School. And I'm gonna share with you um, how we deal with uh, crop fields and vegetable production here at Bartow Middle School. Um, we're very fortunate. We have two full-size crop fields and I say full-size, um, they're pretty big. Um, about a half, between the two, we've got about a half acre of production. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, share a screen with you of um, planting guide that we use through University of Florida. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right. Okay, so you can go ahead and Google Florida Planning Guide and you're going to get this um, PDF that is going to come up. It's from the University of Florida. And it has a little bit of everything, but the one big thing that I'm interested in is, let's get it open here, um, is the when to plant what in what zones, but it, it has a lot of really good information here. The, any PDF, if you're using an iPhone, can be downloaded in your iBooks. A lot of people thought iBooks were just somewhere for you to read. Um, for me, that is where um, I get a lot of, that's where I put a lot of my resource information that I need to have immediately. Okay, so, here they divide the state north central and south it if you scroll down here it decides that north is going to be all of all of florida north of state road 40 central is going to be between 40 and 70 which is where we're at in bartow and south of that and south is going to be below state road 70. because our state is so large we have um, a lot of opportunities to produce a lot of different crops at different times of the year. So um, here, a lot of times when I start talking about crop fields and things like this, my kids get really excited and they're like, oh, I want to plant this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see if it's something we can plant at that time of the year. And um, I've gotten pretty good at knowing what are cool season crops and warm season crops over the years, although there are times that I still go back and um, to this and look. Also within here, it will let you know um, your potential yields, plants per 10 feet squared, days to harvest. You also are gonna see a lot of this also in um, differently or the more specific to the bean, say bean seeds that you're using. Um, spacing and rows. I don't worry so much about these rows. Um, I've got a tractor and one of my tractors is set up where I rotivate everything. It's got a larger um, spacing. And then the other one, I come in and do my rows. I don't worry about this so much in the row column am I, than I am um, here between how far apart they need to be and now the seed depth i go by the general rule of thumb that if you have a seed that is um a quarter of an inch you double that um so it'll be um depth will be used at a half inch so i'm really big about that i let my kids know please do not just stick your finger in there and drop it down to the bottom um, Nature did not give it enough energy inside that little seed to get to the top. So be careful about careful about that. Um, transplantability, if you're starting things in the greenhouse or inside, uh, the one, two, and three is reflected down here. I thought it was down here. Oh, here you go. Um, easily survive is, is a one and all the way to three. Um, is what you need to do. And then you've got some, it's probably not suggested. Um, all right, so this planning guide is like my Bible. You will, um, if you get used to it, there's some things that you'll just know, this is how we do it. Um, 
every time and this is where I'm going to go. But like I said, if you're using, I, I have an iPhone, so I just um, put this, save the PDF to my iBook so I have this in my hand at all times. Uh, the next cool thing that um, I use, I'm going to pull up a uh, example of real quick. And I will honestly tell you, it was a fluke that I found this when I'm planning my garden. And it, it was because I, I have so many different calendars and so many different things going on, but I wanted something that was specific to my, um, just my crop field. So I could watch what was going there. So um, Rocketbook just came up on my feed one time in Amazon when I bought some Frixion pens and Frixion pens and I'll, we'll talk about that a little bit as we, cause that's my um, fave there. We're gonna look through here and this one, I believe, yes. All right, I purchased this one because there is a place for me to put what I'm doing every day in that crop field. I can also put notes about things that I saw, whether, oh my goodness, I just saw, um, I'm starting to see mosaic virus in my in these squash plants on this date. So I can go back and look at that later um, and find out, okay, I got two months into harvest and then I started seeing it, or I got a month in, or we started seeing insects or these types of insects. I can, um, when I talk about my Frixian pens, that's what you use in here. They're actually pens that are erasable. And I'm gonna give a shout out to them. Um, these pens are great for um, kids doing record books, especially for the state fair, and they want them done in pen. Um, here's a way for you can erase it. And it's not like your old school pens that just really tear, don't do a really good job. They don't write nice. These, it says here, write smoothly, just like a regular gel pen and allows you to write erase cleanly. And I'm gonna see if I can pull up a quick video on that. Maybe not, we'll see. I don't see one in here real quick. Either way, um, they also come in clicking ones and stick pens, also highlighters. I will tell you, your planner will love you because there's times we have to change things around and these come in all different colors. So this has been really nice. I color code my um, notes section in here. Down here is a uh, little QR code and at the bottom you can actually send these and I'm going to show you what I did with our spring crop with that and how I use that. So hold on. I do a stop share and then I'm going to get over in that. So let's see here. Uh, one of the places you can put this is in your OneNote. So I'm going to open up my OneNote and get that ready to go so I can show you where those are on here. All right. Maybe I have to share screen and do that. That's fine. I will hmm. There we go. All right, I wanna make sure you've got a screen share of this real quick. Share screen. And I'm not really sure if you're gonna be able to see this. All right, let's see here, new share. 
There we go. Okay, great. I'm excited. All right, so here's um, an example of on my OneNote, I have a place that says crop field. I have my spring 20 uh, notes for that crop field. It lets me know what's going on. Just a lot of information, a lot of things that I may not remember the next time I plant. Um, we're starting to see the fertilizer start work three to four days after um, we put it down. I tried a new um, type of round beans and they were green back. And we'll talk about where I get my seeds in a little bit. Uh, green back. And these are going to be the ones I need to use. I put in here that I really don't need to um, do wax beans in the spring. Although I know um, our this last year has been really crazy. So we're going to probably go ahead and do that. I also see here down here, I said inoculate green bean seeds next year. And that's something we're you know, that I read up on and I need to look at. So there's a lot of different things on here. I'm gonna pull through, um, those were notes, but here's where that calendar came into play. So it let me know, okay, I planted this week. Um, we put water, 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 rain, you know, we've got it. We're weeding between the rows. We're definitely watering. We have an irrigation system. Okay, I ran my plows. And then I also fertilized the east side. Um, I have two crop fields. So then I'm starting to see um, when I planted my zipper peas. You know, where we pull, you know, if we pull weeds or what I um, replanted or if I had, I had an issue. I've also got plants, um, places where, here's when we started harvesting. So I can see, oh, well, yes, it was a 35 day harvest on it, but we end, it end up, we end up not harvesting until, you know, 40 days. Or we harvested earlier on this. So either way, this gives me some ideas. Uh, there was of what I did because when you're dealing with um, these crop fields, you really, there's a lot of times I go, what did we do? And I just can't remember. So that's why I did this. Now, you, I know y'all saw the price on that rocket book and you're like $34, $37 for a, a planner, a blank planner. I could get something free because they get, this is what it does. This is a unique thing. All of this, it's a right, you just wipe it with a cloth. So a lot of times I'll have two pages on two, uh, two different months in there. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I need to get to May. I'll go ahead and you can literally take uh, water and a uh, rag and wipe these things clean. Yes, I know that's kind of scary, um, but that's why I um, down here and I think it'll show maybe, maybe not. Okay, um, I had sent it to my one notes over here so I can have that. I also, if you look in here, my resource, oh, I'm gonna talk about this too. Um, my resources are here. Here's my, um, publication, and this should open up. I don't know why it's trying to be difficult right now. Either way, that's there. The other thing I want to talk about is this other resource I've got sitting here, Fresh from Florida Application. Um, we had um, Roosevelt, Ag we toured the Roosevelt Academy over in Lake Wales and Ray Cruz, we met with him. He is one of the agriculture teachers there. And he really um, turned us on to marketing, branding and getting the fresh from Florida 
brand on our produce and everything we have on our land lab. And so to me, this just puts us in a part where we are saying, we feel like what we're doing, we know what we are doing, not even feel, we know what we're doing is quality. And we're asking you to use your brand, Fresh from Florida. Um, because we're at a school, we don't have to pay anything, which is a nice extra part to that. And it was really easy. We told, I think the back side of this, I think it's two pages. I don't, it, it's a front and a back. So let me see what's going on here. Yeah, actually maybe more than two pages. All right, here's another part. Um, since we're a nonprofit, you can see that we're, we're free. We talk about what we have and what we're wanting to put under this Fresh from Florida brand. Um, we will actually be part of a list when people are looking for Fresh from Florida um, products. So this is another way for us to market our produce. And if you get an opportunity to do it, I would definitely get that. Um, apply for that. Um, let's see here. So those two things are in here. Now, let me get back on sh stop share. Okay, so the other thing that we do is we buy quality seeds. And right now I'm going to get a shout out to Seedway because they're close and I've been very happy with the seeds that we have gotten from them. Um, we have used Will Heights. There's other places out there that you can get, but we do have a Seedway vendor that is close that we can um, either pick them up there or get them mailed to us. They are out of Pennsylvania, so we like we can get things mailed from Pennsylvania, but we try to um, use local vendors as much as possible when we're um, doing this. Now, uh, the benefits of getting seeds from Seedway is that they are going to be, um, a lot of these seeds are used commercially. That is, and so they have to have the germination rate. They have to have all the data to back those seeds right there on your, um, that seed packet. Uh, so the, there's been research, there's some seeds that says, it can only be used in certain areas or whatever, what in whatever situation, that's fine. But you can get a catalog, you can get online, whatever way, but whenever you plant, I, plant quality seeds. I would not suggest going to a feed store or to um, a local hardware store and, or Walmart and saying, oh, let's go get seeds and plant because I can't, you can't guarantee those. And, that is your biggest thing when you get out there and, and it may be the first time you've ever done anything growing anything and here you are you got these seeds and they're bum seeds or they don't produce as much i had another ag teacher that was working with me a couple years back and you know i you know of course i stress everything like this is the way we're going to do it blah 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 and the first time we started getting plants popping up. He was like, how do you get all these, you know, all, all you got such a good germination rate. I'm like, because I buy quality seed that are used with commercial uh, production. So um, then when we started getting the harvesting and he was like, oh my gosh, how are you going to, what are you going to do with all this stuff? And that comes to my next part. We market all of our um, produce through um, word of mouth. That's your easy. And the more you do it, the more people want it. Um, the qual most quality that you have, the more people are going to want it. Uh, our students, parents buy it, our staff buy it. There's, you have an opportunity to, you know, tractor supply a lot of times allows people to come and sell um, produce or what have you. They have um, every month. Sometimes they'll let you do it every weekend. It just depends on what they've got going on. Um, we have sold, um, we're fortunate we have a marketplace downtown. So we have sold in the marketplace downtown. You have anything extra, you, you know, if you have, um, food banks that will take, um, perishable items, uh, 
a lot of times they're, you know, we bring protos up for our custodians and that's a whole nother um, talk that we'll have down the road about taking care of um, the custodians and maintenance guys and things like that. But we have um, a, a following, to be perfectly honest with you, of people that want our produce. The other thing is we also have started um, providing very unique um, vegetables that you don't normally see. Um, one ball zucchini is one of our um, ones that we've been, um, and I may actually be able to show you a picture of that. I don't know. Maybe in another one. Um, one ball zucchini, which are round, um, yellow, hence the one ball. Um, sometimes you can get them in uh, eight ball, which are black. Or, well, they, that's the black ball, but it's a, a dark green, like your regular zucchini. We, speaking of zucchini, we like to plant yellow zucchini. The reason I like to plant yellow zucchini, because if you've ever planted green zucchini, which is your normal zucchini, they are really hard to find because the plants are green. You plant yellow and, and they get too big. And people are like, oh, my gosh, you have stuff that's big as a baseball bat. Most people don't want that. They want the smaller ones. So the yellow zucchini stand out when the kids are going through and picking them. And they're it's just so much. I've got um, we also do some scallop squash. Some people may call them patty pan. They kind of have they're kind of um, more of the consistency inside of like a summer squash. A lot of people like those. They're cute. They're, they look like little flying, flying saucers. Um, people love them. Some, but we try to plant things that are a little bit different. We plant a uh, crookneck squash, that yellow crookneck, that's kind of your norm. Um, pickling cucumbers work a lot better because um, that serves two markets. The people that are wanting to pickle and the people that are just wanting fresh cucumbers. And it also adds that extra part to your um, to your lesson when you can say, yes, this is where pickles come from. We add vinegar when we pickle them. Um, so that kind of ties in with your ag system certification test. And of course, I'll always say that um, and make reference to anything that has to do with a certification test, especially ag systems. Um, I'm going to look through my notes here to see if there's anything else. Ooh, fertilizer. We use Nutrient Ag Solutions. Um, they have where we can go to them and pick up um, fertilizer. Um, that way, if we need something special for a crop that we have, we can change. Um, we can call them and say, this is what we're looking for as far as a different nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Uh, we tend to use, and most of our crops, 10, 10, 10. I do like using a higher nitrogen and um, potassium with our uh, collards. However, sometimes that's just not possible and they get 10, 10, 10 too. So um, because we live in Florida and we have a lot of um, sand in our soil, it's not, there's not a lot of water holding capacity and it's but a lot of drainage. We are um, fertilizing more often, but less. So um, that's why it's, um, I will honestly tell you, and some people may roll their eyes, but I try to fertilize every 10 days. So I like to say the 10th, the 20th and 30th are when I'm gonna fertilize. Now, granted, those days may run on a weekend. So we may do it before the weekend or after the weekend, whatever makes things work for your situation. Um, let me see. Okay, also price points. Um, There's some things that we just always sell. I, I like to just try to stay with dollars. Um, so you're not dealing with as many coins and things like that. Uh, so I try to look at what the price points are on the local grocery stores and things like that. Um, I will say for the last, since probably 2000, the last 20 plus 20 years, I have been selling collard greens for $2 a bunch. Um, now my bunches have gotten a little bit smaller because the grocery stores are getting smaller. Um, but 
look at the price point. If you're trying to figure out how much should I charge, you may have baggies that you put um, all of it, you know, four pickling cucumbers in there for a dollar, uh, whatever. Um, having those um, scales are going to be really um, helpful to have them in the classroom. Um, you can even have a hanging scale as well. Um, it just all depends on what you're doing. But either way, whatever you do, um, have fun with it. After you're done and maybe you're getting down on the end of the harvest, you may even want to have um, a cooking demonstration or what have you. And that's the other thing is sometimes the kids really need to know how do you cook this? Because sometimes people say, well, I like to buy it. It's really pretty, but how do you cook it? So be able to give some information to those kids, even if they have to research some uh, different recipes and things like that when they're talking with the public. I think we've hit on it. Oh, pesticides. I will honestly tell you that I haven't used as many pesticides out there and it's not because I don't have the resources to do that. We, we've got a boom sprayer and things like that, but, um, we a lot of times will use um, like thuricide or something like that um, that has for like the worms. and um, But we've been very fortunate that we haven't had as many problems with insect damage. If we do, we try to um, come in with something that has an organic flair to it. If we have to use something that's chemical, we're, we're fine with that. We, when we brand, when we got branded with, um, for, fresh from Florida, we did not declare that we were organic because I did not want to get caught with that whole part. Um, but, um, the kid, a lot of times when people are buying stuff, they just are so excited that the kids raise this produce so and that it looks so good so just have fun with it and make some money um, that may be another thing I know at one time we used to have a ongoing record book um, of showing how much money we put into it and how much we um, um, got back and we if we made X amount of profit we had a little party at the end or something like that so just little ideas to have fun with it make things happen but um, definitely whatever you have um, definitely use it one other thing there are Earthway does have a seed planter so there are some crops that you can plant like beans um, can be planted with seeds um, we use transplants as well as um, seeds whenever we're putting in our crop field. So bye. Y'all have a good day. I hope y'all learned something. Bye.